is Aneta and welcome to my art channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday despite the situation we are currently in and that you're staying safe. I would like to wish you all a happy time no matter where you are. So first of all today I'm recording without a script so I'm sorry if I'm going to, to ramble a little bit. Lately I finished all of my Inktobers and I know it sounds funny because we are in December, it's actually almost the end of December, but um, it was a long ride for me, especially because my style and my process is very time demanding and I was thinking about making this episode maybe something a little bit more festive. I came up with this idea that it's pretty recurring every now and then. Um, I wanted to draw an interpretation of my own Ice Queen and there is actually, I think, a funny story related to that. Um, back in 2007 I was actually looking for an avatar for my DeviantArt account. Back then I didn't know how to create my own, I didn't know how to redimension, you know, images and so on. And it was actually pretty common to just find one on the internet and, and use it. I had this like teeny tiny image of like a girl with very dark makeup with white hair but it wasn't actually hair i think it was fur although it was super small i loved it so much and it became my avatar for my entire time i spent on deviantart i guess i never changed that i don't have that account anymore i'm actually thinking whether to get back to the platform or not but anyway that image was really inspiring to me it's kind of crazy if we think about it today uh, i guess i found it actually one day on the internet and it was from a from like a fashion magazine so I started my process as per usual, I drew like a quick sketch and then I used my light table to transfer that on my 300 GSM paper. So I've done the sketch and I was ready to proceed and then I realized that I really didn't like her face. It wasn't that bad but the face it's like the first element you see on a, on a drawing so I wanted to be satisfied with what I did. I decided to redraw everything from the beginning. This is why I'm showing you two versions of the same drawing. Yeah the second one looked better at least in my opinion. I was a bit upset to have wasted one page of good paper unfortunately this can happen sometimes and I decided to make good use of it and I was using it basically to check my colors before applying them. When it comes to colors I decided to use my brand new Schminke watercolor palette. This is the Academia palette not the Horadam. Technically this should be like student grade but I'm really amazed. The colors are very vibrant and I never used it before but I did some swatches of course as soon as I got it for my birthday. So this was my first time using this palette and in this transparent pouch I keep my cleaning cloth. I use it for my brushes. I also finally had a chance to use my acrylic inks and this is a purchase that I made few months ago. I chose the basic set which is made of six colors and again I made some swatches just to see at the very beginning how do they behave but I never tried them like on a proper piece. I started from obviously mixing colors and the first layer I wanted to make was with acrylic inks. So acrylic ink is basically unremovable and it works perfectly as a base for your paintings. The only downside in my opinion is that when you apply it is incredibly vibrant and the gradients are just magical to watch but as soon as it dries um, it becomes opaque. And this is kind of annoying but on the other hand it still makes a perfect base for your paintings. So the first thing was to find the perfect shade of blue 
And to be honest, I didn't have like a specific idea in my head. I should probably make some color compositions, but I'm too lazy to do that and I don't know, it's so much time taking. I always admire artists that do that. <laughs> I mean, it is very important and I'm guilty here, but I just don't have the patience. So my research of my perfect blue was actually pretty casual. <laughs> But you know what, that's fine. In this case, I wanted to enjoy the process and see how colors react with each other. Also because this was my first time with acrylic ink, so why not? But uh, before we jump into the actual process, please enjoy these 15 seconds of my Ice Queen series from 2007, 2008 and 2016. So I invite you to pause on the pictures if you want to see some details because I would like to talk about them and how my thinking process was and what I actually learned from them. It's been a long journey. In 2007, I procrastinated a lot and back when I did this drawing of my first ice queen I was actually wanting to try digital drawing and I remember having like my very first tablet which was a pentagram and I don't know if that brand even exists or if you if you know it even it was a very bad tablet I mean back then it was probably the best one or a good one at least but um, it required a lot of patience and of course I struggled I struggled because I couldn't coordinate my eyes with my hand which is pretty common and it's probably the biggest struggle of every person who starts making digital art on a no screen tablet. So what I did, I drew that ice queen on a piece of paper and you know it didn't bother, I just colored it with like random pencils. I used black for shadows which you shouldn't be doing but I was using it everywhere. I was just really really lazy and what I did, I scanned that picture and I thought that digital art is actually kinda effortless that the only thing I needed to do was just to, you know, use the smudge tool or use a very fuzzy brush and create this beautiful gradient effect. Little did I know this is the biggest mistake you can make and I see this mistake being like like very repetitive in every generation of artists. It's kinda, you know, upsetting that we all need to go through that smudge tool but it is what it is. Maybe this is the, the only way to learn from your mistakes, you know. Anyway, 2008, I probably realized how lazy I was, so I decided to work a little bit more on that. And it is way better than it was the year before. But still, I think it requires work. Uh, the anatomy isn't quite right. Her hand is extremely long. I didn't even took a reference. And I also painted her like very stiff. And oh, by the way, I, I didn't have like a proper watercolor set back then. I mean, I'm saying watercolor because I suppose that was the technique I knew best. Well, quote unquote best, which was maybe available to me. That would be the best expression. The first like proper set of watercolors I actually acquired in 2009 and it was White Nights and I still have these watercolors and I still love them, they're very pigmented and I still remember the day I went actually to buy them. From 2010 I suffered a terrible art block which ended in 2015. So it was five years of basically painting nothing. I guess I did like two paintings back then, maybe. I just completely burned out and I lost my interest. And in 2015 I actually decided once again to try digital art. At that point I was able to buy a Wacom tablet and my second tablet was from the Bamboo series. 
So from 2016 I took drawing seriously and I still felt discouraged by not being able to coordinate my, my hand with my eyes. But you know, I didn't give up and I was trying day after day and some days were good, some days were not. I really really struggled but one day it just clicked and it just happened and I guess this is pretty much with everything we just need to be patient and just push through that. When I look at this drawing from 2016 I don't draw that way anymore. I was really focused on details. One thing that I wasn't used to was to just make simple sketches back then and I was thinking about every single piece that I was making as an assignment to do, you know, and this is not the right way, I should be more open for experimenting, but back then I wasn't. I think patience is the key to everything, so just be patient and just do your stuff, you know. So yeah, this was my super fast journey in the past and as you can see, well, I think I've learned something over the last few years. But as I'm saying, um, it was a trial and error and even this piece was kind of a trial and error, I'd say. I wasn't actually sure whether I was doing everything correctly and the fact that I didn't have an undo button was a bit annoying. So I was adding subsequent layers and I was observing what was actually changing.
also quote unquote discovered white acrylic ink and at first I thought that this was a complete game changer that I would be able to make highlights without you know having to repeat 
one line on the other. I'm using right now a white Posca pen, which is acrylic and it is not that bad, but I'm still looking for that white perfect medium that will cover the surface and that will help me to make simple highlights with one stroke. The white acrylic ink was very promising and I was very excited to use it but unfortunately I discovered that as soon as it dries, it dries a little bit transparent so far, the best medium I found was white gouache. And at this point, I decided to finally use my watercolors. So the phase of layering acrylic ink was done. And I felt actually pretty excited because it meant that I was really close to finish everything, which wasn't the case as I discovered later on. It still required a lot of work. I started to mix different colors, trying to find like the best formula. I wanted to make some contrast. At this point, my painting was extremely blue and I was actually aiming for a more like sepia tone, but it came out extremely yellow. And in this moment, I basically panicked. I was afraid to have ruined this piece. So I thought, okay, um, let's just focus on the snow for a moment and just ignore the fact that I painted half of my painting yellow. I, I'll figure this out. I thought about one of these, you know, winter mornings when you have like this yellow on the horizon and it slowly transforms into pink and then it becomes basically light blue. But again, my colors were extremely saturated, so I was adding tons of water. Luckily, this paper can handle everything. Liquitex Basics Silver Acrylic. I didn't film the entire process only because it's extremely boring. I need to make at least two layers to cover everything.
once it dried I decided to tone down the sky a little bit and I added more blue to the sky and I covered most of that pink and yellow so it became basically like a light purple. I actually like that effect more than I did before. At the very end, when I was almost done with the entire composition, I give a shot to the white acrylic ink to make highlights and to make some snow on the branches. But most of the work has been done off camera, only because whenever I work with white, I need to keep my face very close to the piece. So you wouldn't see it probably anyway, I would cover everything with my head, so oh, sorry for that. And as I said before, acrylic ink wasn't the best, wasn't the revelation I was expecting it to be, so I ended up using white gouache. So this is the final result. I hope you enjoyed the entire process. Thank you so so much for watching if you made it to this point. I'm very grateful for that and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Leave me a like, comment, I'm sure this would help grow my channel and yeah, have a happy holiday once again and see you next time. Ciao!